Hello guys, uh, in this video we're going to talk about two special type of uh, signals. Uh, the first one is the impulse function and second one is the unit step function. Um, we're going to talk about these two functions in discrete time and in the next video I'm going to talk about these two functions in the continuous time. So um, starting off with uh, impulse function. Impulse function has a symbol delta of n and we plot it like this. Uh, we have n on the independent axis and then we have an impulse or a bar at 0 of height 1. So that's the that's the figure of this impulse function and um, it is, it's 0 everywhere else. So we define this impulse function as 1 when n is 0 and it's 0 for any other non-zero value of n. Now for the case of unit step function, um, the symbol is u of n and we define the unit step function as this. Um, it's going to get a value of 1 for positive, sorry, for non-negative values of n and it's going to take a value of 0 for negative values of n. So if I plot the unit step function, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a value of 1 at all values of n for negative or non negative n's and it has a value of 0 for all negative n's. Now one may ask is there a way to uh, write is there a way to write a delta of n or the impulse function um, as a function of the unit step that is is there a way to write an impulse as a function of u of n well a there is and it is this thing u of n minus u of n minus 1 now to check if it's true uh, we already have u of n here now if I ask you guys to plot u of n minus 1 it is going to be something like this it's going to start from 1 because u of n minus 1 is nothing but u of n move to the right by one sample so this is u of n minus 1 um, and if I if I take u of n minus 1 out of this u of n all I will be left with is this sample which is nothing but an impulse function so in fact that makes sense so that's what we have proved that we can write impulse as a function of unit step now the natural question is if we can find a function um, that can relate that can that, that can be used to write the unit step as a function of impulse well i'm going to write the answer here and then i'm going to make an explanation um, so yeah um, we can write u of n as a function of impulse and that's this So that's an expression um, which which links the impulse with a unit step. So now we need to prove this statement. Well, we already have proven this one, so let's see how can we prove this one. Well, there are two proofs for it. Um, the first proof is using figures. So let me draw this function delta of m. Well, it's delta of m which suggests that the independent axis is going to be m and my impulse is going to be at m equal to 0. Now, um, we need to understand what is happening here. Well, I'm adding, I'm adding um, the function uh, for m equals to minus infinity till n. I'm not sure about what n is as of yet. So if n happens to be negative, um, well, if n happens to be negative, let's say, well, if n is 0 over here, so if n is negative, then it has to be somewhere behind this 0. So let's say n is over here. And I'm going to sum from the values of m minus infinity to n all the values of the function. So if I start summing from here, from minus infinity till n, I'm adding nothing but zeros which is going to result so this summation is going to result 
to 0 for n less than 0. Now for the second case if I take my n this n to be positive let's say if n is positive or uh, well, if it's positive then it has to be uh, ahead of 0 let's say n is here now so the blue case is for n is positive then what this expression is doing that I'm adding all the values of function from minus infinity to n where n is positive so I'm adding all the way from minus infinity till n where n is positive so I'm adding the value of function which is 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 da da da, and then 1 here so all their zeros adding with 1 is going to result into 1 and then I have to add all the zeros over here so I'm going to get 1 for n is going to be positive also when n was 0 I'm going to sum from if n happens to be 0 then I am right on this point so I'm adding from minus infinity to 0 if n happens to be 0 then I'm adding 0 0 0 0 0 and then 1 which also is going to result into 1 so I'll have a one answer for n equal to 0 as well so we can see that this um, we can see that let me take this thing out so we can see that this expression is nothing but this thing over here and guess what that thing is that's a definition of u of n that we have discussed a few minutes ago which I wrote up here here it is so we have proven this statement that this expression is nothing but u of n well that's one of the proofs of this statement there is another mathematical proof I'm going to do it now um, so we have done the first way of proving this statement that u of n is nothing but summation of uh, delta of m where m goes from minus infinity till n so let's try to prove this statement in, in a more mathematical way so I have to prove this statement that u of n is summation of delta of m's where m goes from minus infinity to n I'm going to write something here as an aside and that is that u of n is nothing but delta of n plus delta of n minus 1 plus delta of n minus 2 and so on and so forth and how is it that how is that true if I plot this function the first one I will have an impulse of height 1 at 0 and if I plot this function I'm going to have an impulse of height 1 at n equals to 1 and if I am asked to plot this function I will have a impulse at n equals to 2 of height 1 and if I and if I add all these functions I'll end up with um, an impulse strain which starts from 0 and goes till n equal to infinity and is 0 else everywhere else and that's nothing but u of n so this expression is in fact true and I can write this expression as this um, delta of n minus m so that's another way of writing this unit step function um, and I'm going to use this way of writing the unit step function to prove this statement um, now let's start our proof from this expression um, let this part equals to n sorry k so I'm saying let k be n minus m remember that I'm doing nothing but change of variables here so when the limit of n was uh, m was minus infinity and I'm gonna get uh, plus infinity for k and when m happens um, I think there's something mistake over here it should have been 0 here I think yeah yeah it should have been 0 because when m is 0 I'll have delta of n which is this thing over here and when it's m is 1 I'll have delta of n minus 1 which is this thing over here and when m is 0 sorry m is 2 I'm gonna have delta of n minus 2 which is over here so yeah I mean I made a mistake it should be have been it should have been 0 rather than minus infinity so when m was 0 I'll get k equals to n 
and when m is infinity I'm going to get uh, minus infinity for k so we can write this expression as sum of k goes from uh, zero uh, n till minus infinity delta of k and um, we can we can write this expression as k from minus infinity to n yeah this is minus infinity so we can write this expression as this as well well why is it true it simply says that if I add 1 plus 2 plus 3 from uh, let's just say from right to left I'm gonna get an answer of 6 and if I sum 1 plus 2, 1, 2 and 3 from left to right the answer will remain 6 as well so we can sum the function from n till minus infinity or you can sum from minus infinity to n the, the answer does not change so this equality holds true well guess what that is that is um, um, on the right side sorry on the left side we have u of n so that was the expression that we were supposed to prove written over here um, don't worry about this k over here or the m over there because the variables over which we sum is uh, going to get resolved so this k is nothing but dummy variable over here we can have an l over here it's our choice so that thing is proven um, if you have any question regarding the discrete time impulse function or discrete time unit step function just leave it in the comment section and i'll get back to you thank you for listening